Hey Bubble family, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I am going to be talking a little bit about Oedipus Complex. So many of you have messaged in the comments, emailed me saying, do you think that Harry has some kind of disorder? Sorry, <laughs> my phone just went. Um, I digress. So yes, does he have some kind of disorder, some kind of complex um, to do with the trauma? Now, one of them, the things that have been mentioned is histrionic disorder, narcissism, and of course, Oedipus complex. Now, oh, and the other thing, arrested development. Now, do I think that Harry has... Well, it's difficult to say he has because you cannot diagnose. But do I think he shows signs of any of these? Absolutely. So I'm going to discuss what, 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 <laughs> which I think in this video. So if you'd like to join me, then please do. And if you don't know by now, then grab your drink of choice, whether it be tea, whether it be copy, copy. <laughs> coffee. I am so sorry. <laughs> I'm blaming the menopause. Um, so tea, coffee, latte, hot chocolate with marshmallows, whether you would like to have my cherries and berries, which is what I always drink, then maybe you would like to add a little something something to that drink of choice. Because if you do, and I always say it is five o'clock somewhere. So let's grab your drink and dive right in. So for those of you who don't know, I am a qualified therapist and trained life coach. This is not therapy. I am giving you my therapeutic perspective. And sometimes along with that, I give you my personal perspective, which can at times more often than not differentiate from what I do professionally. Um, so, and of course, also, for those of you who don't know and you're new here, I am struggling with the menopause, which means I have brain fog. I get my words mixed up and all over the place. Um, yeah, along with a lot of other joyous symptoms. So, got my Christmas earrings in. Oedipus complex. Now, a lot of you have said to me, like I said in the, the beginning bit, does Harry struggle and suffer with something? Now, looking at the way Harry behaves, I would say yes. And one of the things I want to talk about is Oedipus complex. And for those of you who do not know what this is, it is where the it starts off in childhood and it's along the realms of the child in question has an unhealthy association more in the lines of a subconscious sexual attraction to the parent of the opposite sex and then they have also subconsciously this hidden anger in regards to the parent of the same sex. Now a lot of the time this can also be transferred to another member of the family. So for example if there is a parental figure that is less apparent and if we're looking at Harry's case that Charles was obviously a public figure the heir to the throne so he was very busy he was also seeing Camilla now as much as he tried to be a very good father he was possibly at times an absent father so the person that then steps in is William so this Oedipus complex the way he feels could also be transferred to William which would create also the possibility that he feels that way given how Diana I think didn't have a particularly healthy relationship with William where she divulged things to William at a very young age and he was witness to a lot of things at a very young age, the things that he shouldn't have been witness to. A lot of it to do with probably her um, eating disorder, the fact that she was his, you know, he was her confidant and she would ring him and tell him things that he probably wouldn't have really felt comfortable knowing. So Harry would have seen this growing up. He would have seen that it would almost look to him as if William was the favourite. Now, 
Obviously, we don't know whether that was the case with Diana. We also don't know if that was the case with, with Charles. But in Harry's mind, this is kind of what it would have been. So given the fact that he's got, the, he, he's lost his mother, given the fact that at a very young age, given the fact that we have also what we've spoken about before, drugs and alcohol, what would be starting to form here would be this underlining. And a lot of people have asked, is he conscious of this? With Oedipus Complex, no. Even though you might be aware that you will have certain... Um, like emotions will come up or feelings will come up or words will come up. You won't understand where they're coming from. You will just think that they are what they are. So it's not as if Harry is kind of sitting there having these sexual thoughts about his mother. And, and a lot of times, even in youngsters, because children feel a deep love for the parent of the opposite sex, they don't understand the difference between what is you know that's why you get a lot of young girls that go i want to marry my daddy or you get a lot of boys going i want to marry my mummy because they don't understand the difference between what is love as in a sexual relationship partner love to parent love so harry would have started to form this way of being subconsciously as a child he would have feelings of anger even anger towards his mum at times um but there is possible that he would also, again, even in his young age, would witness things that he shouldn't witness. And so, yes, this would have started to form. But no, he wouldn't be aware that A, that it is, unless a therapist has pointed this out to him, he wouldn't be aware what it is. Now, it derives from uh, Sophocles, Oedipus Tyrannus, where he was told, um, in, I believe it's, is it Greek mythology? I'm not 100% sure, but I think it is, um, where he was actually, he learned that he was actually going to kill his father and have sex with his mother. And obviously this is incredibly Freudian as well, because Freud, Freud picked up on this and he started doing a lot of research into this. So is it very possible that Harry has this? Given the unhealthy way he has transferred his mother into Megan um, or Megan into his mother should I say yes I would say that Harry does have this I also believe he does have arrested development due to the amount of drugs and alcohol that because what can happen with drugs and alcohol is the age you start taking them and what this means is if you use drugs and alcohol as a coping mechanism, what happens to your brain is it it kind of registers that this is what you're using to manage. It doesn't understand necessarily that it's a bad thing. All it knows is that this is what you have used to cope. So your brain will start sending you that message that this is um, what you need to cope. Now, because I believe Harry started this at a very young age, what also happens, it's like you're held in stasis. Your emotional maturity is stunted. So depending on the age that Harry started this, and if you, but if you look at his behaviour, it is very... Now, I'm not saying all teenagers behave like this, but it, it kind of is conducive to how we would expect teenagers to behave. Very stroppy, very moody, very immature, not taking responsibility for actions that he's doing or saying this is very um along the lines of arrested development so I do think Harry has this also I've also spoken about because people have said do we think that Harry is narcissistic I don't believe now Harry has narcissistic personality disorder because he does show a caring side to him and pretty much all narcissists do not have empathy now they can mask empathy to get what they want but they don't have it. And I do believe in the right circumstances, Harry does have it. What I do believe he's suffering from is something which could be histrionic disorder, which is under the umbrella of narcissism. Or it could be narcissistic traits where he's learning these, being around the people he is, being around Megan. He's starting to learn how to be this way. That doesn't mean he's got the disorder, but it just means that he's showing traits which can be worked on. Um, 
So yes, I do think that he has got multiple issues that are incredibly deep rooted. Do they stem from the death of his mother? No, I actually think they probably stemmed before that. He's, you know, they're in a very high profile family. I don't think it's uncommon for there to be a sibling that struggles with that fact. Plus, obviously being the spare, in his words, to the heir to the throne. Um, you know, that's going to take its toll. You know, and I think you have to be quite a strong emotionally together person to be able to maybe deal with that. Now, if Diana had stayed alive and hadn't have passed away tragically all those years ago, then it is very possible that Harry would be a much different person. OK, he still could be incredibly spoilt. He could be self-indulgent, entitled, all of those things. But it's also very possible that if Diana had married, become, you know, maybe a bit more stable and happier within herself. His father is now happier with him being with Camilla. Um, William is happy with Catherine. It is also possible that Harry could have met somebody else, somebody a lot more of a calming influence and a better influence with him. And he could be completely different now. But obviously that's not the case. Other things that I have been asked as well is, do I think that he can change and the answer is yes if he is out of the very environment that has is creating the the problem so for example even though he's he has had these issues in the past if he is around a more loving structured safe environment then with the right support and help in therapy or where he chooses to go he could absolutely change I don't believe it's ever too late for some. Now, when it comes to Megan, do I think that she can change? In my opinion, no. Because I believe she has person pers <laughs> narcissistic personality disorder, I don't believe that she will ever change because unfortunately people with this disorder do not believe they do anything wrong. She will never hold herself accountable. She will keep going and going and going until she finds well it won't even be that she'll stop when she finds somebody new she'll just transfer it over to somebody else so she's always going to be doing what she's doing it just means that it will be somebody different so even though at the moment the target is the royal family and William and Catherine it seems um once that ends I think the next target will be Harry because I think they will divorce and then it could, depending on who the, who the children are with, it could be the children. And then all it will, or it will be, um, it will always be somebody. It'll be her own family. She'll she'll just keep going, and but just the mark will move to the people that she feels have wronged her. So she will never change. She will just transfer to somebody different. I do think it's a real shame that Harry has gone the way he's gone. I think it's absolutely disgusting what he's allowed his wife to do and I will say allow because she has gone and done this but he's also responsible enough to say you're not doing this to my family um, but unfortunately he's I believe he's so far gone with her and I also think like and I've always said that when it comes to the and I appreciate that there are people that believe she was pregnant I don't understand how you can believe she was pregnant but people do um, and I understand that people have these thoughts and feelings around the children. Um, but I do believe that it was possible that Harry had got somebody else pregnant because there were rumours of him being unfaithful, which is why I also believe the rumour was then added about Prince William being unfaithful to dist distract in a way or deflect away from Harry being unfaithful. And then... So they had to create, obviously, then Megan quickly being pregnant, which then was why they we had the whole moon bump fiasco. And I'm sorry, but I, the fact that the media never called her out, there's always going to be, even when you are really pregnant, there's always going to be a, some media story that kind of goes, oh, is this a lie? Is this real? Who is the real father? And, but there was nothing, nothing. It was almost like there was just this embargo in talking about her pregnancy unless it was just something very positive. And I just thought, 
I just feel there's something wrong here. And being someone from Britain who is a royalist and these children are in the line of succession, I feel we have a right to know who who is, you know, was, were they born of her body? Um, because of the, like the moon bump flashes. And, you know, to me, that was her saying, I know, I know that you know, but you can't do a damn thing about it. No one can call me out on this. You know, it's almost as if it was just intentional. So I know I've kind of digressed a bit from what I was saying, but it just feels as if this this whole thing has been to trap Harry into this relationship. And that could be why Harry is feeling like he has to stay in this relationship, which is why now he's powerless to stop her. I don't know if this is going to stop. I think the only way the only way it will stop is when she's found somebody that can elevate her a bit further in whatever her end game is, if there is an end game. To be the most powerful woman on the planet um is possibly what I think that she's going for. Um and Harry can only take her so far. So I do think that she has got potential designs on the White House. I really do think that. Because she's a narcissist and she's a megalomaniac. So, yeah. But when it comes to Harry, like I say, I do think that, yes, he does have Oedipus complex. And I think he also has arrested development and possibly histrionic. Um, and well, certainly traits of. But you let me know what you think in the comments, guys. Now, I have promised you my <laughs> my tree story. Um, well, so firstly, on the way to getting my tree, I <laughs> almost skidded off the side of it, it just it felt like it was one thing after another. So I was going to go with my mum and dad. They couldn't make it because I think the weather wasn't particularly great or my dad wasn't feeling very well. So there was something, there was a reason why they couldn't make it. So I went with my niece and it was a little bit of a sad moment because normally I go with my boys. But unfortunately, Tristan's in Australia and Kyle was busy. So I went with my niece on the way there. Um, firstly, I always play Christmas songs. My, for some reason, my car play just decided not to work at all. Um, it just wouldn't connect at all. So there was no Christmas songs. So that put me in a bit of a not happy about that. So on the and it was getting dark on the way there. I always go and I always go to the same place, which I filmed last year. And I've got a little film, kind of some photos and a little film, um, which I'll put at the end of this. So I always go to the same place, Old Oak Christmas um Old Oak Inn uh, Christmas trees and I this guy Mike who I speak to I've known since I was eight years old I've been going there since I was eight years old and his uncle I think it used to own it and so he's taken it over so it's kind of like this lovely tradition that I have and um, so of course on the way there nearly um, come around a bend this car was coming almost like on the wrong side of the road so of course I had to swerve and so I nearly went into a ditch that was a second thing <laughs> so that was like a scary moment then I got there and the mic wasn't there and he always helps me get my tree because he knows what I like and he usually can direct me in the right place but he wasn't there he was busy um he was I think he was doing some delivery so he wasn't there so then I spoke to this guy who I'd never spoken to before who didn't understand that I am possibly the fussiest customer when it comes to um, my tree and so, of course, I think he was getting stressed out with me. And I don't blame him because I am incredibly anyone that anyone that knows me knows what I'm like with my Christmas tree. But I sympathize with anyone who has to put up with somebody who is a perfectionist when it comes to certain things or even has OCD, because I do think I have OCD when it comes to my tree. Because I'm literally like, no, it's not tall enough. No, it's too short. No, it's not wide enough. No, it doesn't look like an actual shape of a tree. No, it's too bushy that side. I, I, I'm a nightmare. 
Um, so anyway, this poor guy is holding up, <laughs> unwrapping, holding up one tree. And I'm like, no, holding up. An no. And then I'm like, hmm. Oh, yeah, no, actually, no, I think I might like that one. And I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> So, uh, so of course I can see here and it's getting darker and darker and darker so of course he, then he picks up this tree and I can see that he's probably like oh, please love please just choose a tree I actually want to go home for Christmas so um so I can see quite kind of see that so I'm like do you know what yeah I'll, I'll take that one that it looks fine didn't look at it fully but I kind of felt that I could see properly and it was okay anyway so I get it home and then I can't find my Christ, 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 Christmas tree stand. Um, I'm looking everywhere for it, can't find it. So I'm getting myself really annoyed because it's kind of like, oh, for goodness sake, because I, where have I put it? Because like, I have a tendency to just put things down somewhere and then I'm, I forget where I've put it. In the end, it was apparently, it was up in the loft. D why I put it up in the loft and not in the shed, I don't know. But for some reason, I decided to put it up in the loft. And so my niece found it, finally got it, got it in, watered it and opened it up ready for this kind of da da and there was just this where it had it was it literally just showered the floor with these needles and I, and I just kind of stood back and they always get a little bit of droppage when the tree kind of gets opened up but this was to the point where there was bare branches um so I'm looking at this tree and I'm and of course, my parents are coming down the next day to help me decorate it because they miss getting the trees. So they're like, well, we're going to come down. We're going to help. Gonna, we're going to behold the whole thing. And I look at this tree and I was just like. <sighs> and I could just feel myself going. I mean, it sounds really silly to cry over something like that, but I have such a thing. And it's, it's such a big thing for me, Christmas, that I just was like. I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> So I sat there, I probably had a little bit of a blubber, uh, I'm upset over a Christmas tree. And so then I decided to contact Mike and just said to him, please help me. This is the situation. And he's like, don't worry, I've got you. I will go get you another tree. I will come, I will take that one away. We'll put this one in. So anyway, he turns up, he does all that. And as he's taking the other tree, more needles are coming off. So literally my whole carpet is, is pretty much covered now in needles. So then it was, so we had this tree up, didn't didn't uncover it because um, I wanted to let it stand for, tw for at least 24 hours until my mum and dad were coming down. And then... <laughs> so obviously I'm doing all this clean up got, every, got my front room lovely right ready to do the tree my mum and dad come down opened up the tree and the same thing well not literally the same thing but it was almost ident almost like the same thing but not to the point where there was bare it was it was just a lot of droppage again and I was like how have I been so unlucky the second tree I didn't want to say anything to Mike at this point because I thought, you know what, I can salvage this. It's fine. It's it's you know we'll decorate it. It'll be fine. So so we're decorating this tree, um, and it looked lovely. And I took a picture of it. And in the picture, you can't really see anything. So I was like, Do you know what? Okay, that's fine. Um, well, I went away just recently to my parents, and I come back and I walked in the front door. And I walked into my front room and there on the ground was my tree all on one side. It had literally fallen over um, and I can only think, and I'm going to blame my cats here, I can only think that my cats have pulled the tree over. Um, and I just, I, I literally walked in and I just looked at it and I went, nope nope and I literally turned around shut the door and just walked walked away and I and I just was like I, I, I don't even I, I don't even know how to process this at the minute I I'm I just what <laughs> so, so I left that tree for about an hour um and then I walked back in and I was just so deflated I thought I cannot believe this so I'm trying to pick this tree up and of course I can't do it because I've got to pick the tree up plus get it into the holder back into the holder and it's just too heavy because it's a six foot tree 
needles i cannot tell you the needle droppage was insane it was everywhere i i was finding them all over the carpet my table my sofas my, the star had broken and fallen off. One of my favourite baubles, which was my Beauty and the Beast bauble with some glitter in, that had smashed on the floor. Um, there was a couple of others that were broken. And I was just... I, yeah, I, I, was, I, I was like... Uh, <sighs> and I don't know if any of you have ever gone through something like this where you come home and your tree has fallen over and you've had it lovely. It is just that kind of most deflating kind of moment. So then my neighbour come round to try and help me. And then she's like, right, my husband will be home after work. I'll get him to so bless him. He come round. He helped me put it back up and stand it back up. But it's kind of like, <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> it's, honestly, it's, it's, it's drunk. <laughs> so the point where I said to my dad, I said, it's okay. I said, because we can just all get drunk. And when we get drunk, then we'll just believe it's straight. Um, because it's just at an angle. Um but I managed to get the lights back on it, the tinsel back on it, the, some of the decorations back on it. And very, very gradually, because every time I touched the tree, more needles would drop. More ne I mean, and now there is bare branches, but I'm just like, you know what, your poor little tree, <laughs> you're staying with us, even if you end up. And it reminded me of that Christmas with the cranks. And I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen it with, where he goes, he suddenly, um, they decide this year because their daughter's gone on holiday, they decide that they're not going to have Christmas. And then all of a sudden the daughter, I think on Christmas Eve, rings them and says, I'm coming home for Christmas. And they have to go and get this tree. And he, so he goes into this Christmas tree place and the guy's like, well, we've sold out. And the only one we've got is this one. And he holds up this bare Christmas tree with no needles on it and he's like yeah I'll have that one and it just kind of reminded me of that so I was just like this has just been so unlucky for me um but I managed to yeah get it erected and it's um well it is literally like the leaning power leaning power <laughs> I was just about to say the leaning power of teaser <laughs> what <laughs> what the leaning tower of Pisa, but it is like the leaning tree of M's. <laughs> so definitely um bizarre story, but um and it's definitely not been the best year for um yeah for that. So hmm. That is my, so yes, it is now decorated. Whether or not it will stay that way, I am hoping at least it lasts till Christmas. After that, it can do what it wants. But um, but yeah, so we'll, we'll we'll see. But everything else is is okay. So at least most of my decorations have stayed up now. So let me know in the comments if you have any funny Christmas stories that you would like to share with me. And maybe I can read them out in one of the videos, which I do over Christmas. Um, so in the meantime, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you have. If you would like to subscribe to my channel where you will get the latest updates on everything, then please do. If you would like any of my links, whether it be to email me, to send me something through the PO box, um, whether it's to join me on my other platforms, um, buy my merchandise, what else? If you would like to treat me to a cup of coffee because you have enjoyed this video, then that would be very lovely. Um, and yeah, any, anything else, it's all there in the description box of my video. So I think that is it. Oh, I got sent a lovely gift today. So I've been sent some little, little bottles of gin, which is a lemon drizzle gin and a raspberry gin yummy and and I was sent this beautiful little burner which and someone has put inside my favorite Christmas garland melts um so thank you so much you know who you are and I've also been sent some lovely little Christmas presents all wrapped up in Christmas paper, which I'm going to put under the tree and open at Christmas. So thank you so much. Thank you so much so far for the wonderful cards I'm being sent um, and just other things that people have sent me. Thank you so much. I really am just so blessed to have such a wonderful bubble family. 
Um, if I could honestly send a card to you all, I would. Um, maybe that is something I will look into for next year. Um, what else? Oh, Arthur's not here today. He's with his walker, so he's uh, out. And he's been, and we've had so much snow here, so he's been loving the snow. Um, so yeah, bless his little heart. First time he's ever seen snow, and he loves it. Thank, thank goodness. So I hope you're all staying safe and you are staying warm. It is a very cold time of year for some right now. Um, and I wish you a very lovely rest of the day. So as always, I say, please stay safe. And I love you. I appreciate you. But most of all, I respect you. Mwah, bye. So this is the... Going to get the tree. Do you want to be on camera or not? Okay. <laughs> I had this last year with my mum. I was like, Do you want to be on camera? No. Okay. Oh, yeah, there's Mike. Hi. I know. It's so great. When I start stalking people that have got a perfect tree, I'm like, that's my tree. That's my tree. Give it back. Hi. Look, this is all the trees. Yeah, that was a good tree, that one. Yeah, thank you. Do you want a hand for the tree? Um, no, it's okay. I like to look a bit first. Yeah, no worries. Um, it's like a memory. Yeah. I'll we'll put that on the thingy. Okay. Let's say hi. Hi. <laughs> so we're just going to pan around with our tree. Hi. <coughs>